One of the questions that chemists ask a lot is how much is there in my solution or in my sample? So for instance, you might have a contaminated sample of river water and you want to know the amount of the contamination that is in your river water. So the basic question that we're asking when we ask these types of questions is um, how many moles of substance or chemical um, is in my sample. Based on what we know so far, we know that there are basically two ways to get at the number of moles. So the number of moles is equal to the mass of a substance times its molar mass. And so I could measure the mass of the substance. And if I do that, I'm doing an experiment that's called gravimetric analysis. So the other way I could get at the number of moles is to recognize that the number of moles is related to the concentration times the volume of solution. And so I might measure the volume of the solution of a known concentration, and that type of experiment would be called a volumetric experiment or volumetric analysis. And the most common volumetric analysis that we are going to talk about is a titration. All of these analyses are based on a known chemical reaction between the, um, a known compound and the compound that we're trying to analyze for. So we're going to rely on the stoichiometry of a known chemical reaction to calculate, back calculate from something that I know to the thing that I don't know. So for instance, if I was doing a gravimetric analysis and I wanted to know the amount of sulfate in a sample, I might imagine adding something that contains barium 2 plus. So I would have a known barium 2 plus added to my sample which contains the um, sulfate and when I do that I know that this ionic reaction results in solid barium sulfate and so I could isolate and weigh this product and find its mass. And if I know the mass of barium sulfate, then I know its molar mass because I know what the compound is, so I can figure out the number of moles of barium sulfate. Every barium sulfate contains one sulfate, and so I've just back calculated to the number of sulfates that were originally present in my sample. If I want to do a volumetric analysis using titration, I'm going to go at it a little bit differently. So, for instance, I might maybe want to know how much of a particular acid, or H+, is present in my sample. So my sample contains an acid, and I know that acids and bases react with one another. And so I could add a uh, reagent that contains a base. So this is my known um, compound. And those are going to react to form water and some um, salt that is made from the counter ions that um, are on the OH and the H+. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to know the concentration of my OH solution, and I'm going to keep track of the volume that I add in order to just react with the amount of H plus in my sample. So I'm going to stop the reaction when I've completely used up the H plus and ask myself how much OH minus did I have to add to completely use the H plus in my sample. 
If I know the concentration of the OH- and I measure its volume, I can find the number of moles of OH-. And then knowing the stoichiometry of this reaction, I can relate the number of moles of OH- to the number of moles of H+, that was originally in my sample. So both of these types of analysis rely on a known chemical reaction, so I use the stoichiometry of the reaction to calculate back from a known compound to the compound that I don't know the concentration or the amount of. Finally, let's look at a little bit of vocabulary. So the substance that I don't know the concentration of that I'm trying to analyze for is called the analyte. So the analyte is the chemical of interest, the thing I'm analyzing for. And in a titration, the um, substance or the reagent that I'm going to use to react with that chemical of interest, with the analyte, is called the titrant.